By the end of the 21st century, unchecked climate change and overpopulation had escalated beyond the ability of any single nation to successfully manage. With ever-increasing competition for resources, institutions and systems that for the better part of a century had maintained the global power structure began to fail. With their collapse came widespread poverty, famine, and political instability. The outbreak of major wars in East Asia, Central Europe, Africa, and Central America only intensified the scale of the crisis, wasting precious resources and time. Over the course of these conflicts, regional military and economic alliances transitioned into powerful supranational unions, which by 2101 included the European Federation, United American Republics, Eurasian Union, and the People's Federation of Asia, among others. While the formation of these superstates united a remarkable amount of economic, technological, and industrial potential, it was almost entirely wasted supporting disastrous military campaigns which failed to break the global stalemate. It was only in 2151, amidst a tenuous armistice, that three of these superstates, the United American Republics, the European Federation, and the Pan-Pacific Commonwealth, would finally shatter the balance of power. In an unprecedented display of global unity, these superstates began the process of ceding elements of their sovereignty to a revived United Nations. Historians differ on whether these nations were driven by desperation or some higher utopian ideal, but the results were dramatic. Under UN initiatives, extraordinary developments in atmospheric processing, renewable energy, and space exploration finally brought the exploitation of the solar system within reach. Using these innovations as the ultimate negotiating asset, the so-called UN community was able to extend its membership to both neutral nations and formal rivals. By 2163, the United Nations exerted such economic, political, and military influence across the world that it was able to integrate the last remaining holdouts relatively peacefully. Reformed as the United Federation of Nations in 2177, this new institution developed a single internal market, a standardized system of laws, and a directly elected parliament. While its member nations retain responsibility for its own internal affairs and maintain their respected armed forces, the United Federation of Nations has the potential to become mankind's first world government. Yet for all the power and effort invested into this new federation, divisions remain between its members. Lingering resentments from old wars threaten to split the organization apart and cast mankind back into chaos and conflict. Even as the first plans are drafted for the colonization of distant planets, many doubt that the organization will live to see the dawn of the next century. Its critics claim that the federation, like the United Nations before, has either outlived its purpose or become bogged down in its own bureaucracy. If this is true, then it might be more accurate to say that humanity has failed. Failed to live up to the ideals of an organization with the potential to become the supreme forum of peace and justice, the authentic seat of freedom. But what these critics fail to understand is that the Federation is not a product of naive do-gooders. It is harshly real and the day might still come when mankind will see it not as some abstraction, but as a power they made themselves. If old resentments can be forgiven and petty politics cast aside, then the human spirit might be unleashed. If given that chance, the United Federation of Nations can spread across the stars unhindered. No triumph will lay outside its grasp, no hardship beyond its resolve, and no tyranny beyond its judgment. The United Federation of Nations is the first of five possible nations that could become the focus of Stellaris Invicta Season 2. If you'd like to vote for the Federation and embrace the ideals of liberty, justice, and equality, a pledge of just $2 a month will get you access to the polls when they open this Friday. And to learn a little bit more about how this nation could work in-game, be sure to check out our Twitter and Facebook pages where we've just posted some additional information.